Hello YouTubers, welcome to the Riding with Rick channel. I'm Rick, your host, and today we're gonna take a look at the parking brake on the new Honda Goldwing DCT model. Love it or hate it, we gotta deal with it. Before we get into this video and talking about the rear parking brake and how to adjust it and maintain it, uh, I highly suggest um, supplementing your owner's manual with a service manual. Um, this is the 2018-2019 Gold Wing service manual, which is appropriate for this bike. It also covers uh, a non-tour model, the BD and the B. If you are a do-it-yourselfer like myself, or you just want to learn about how all the systems work on this motorcycle, uh, this is the way to go. And it does come with an electrical troubleshooting guide. Uh, it is a, I'll admit that it is a uh, big dollar amount to pay for this and it's a tough pill to swallow. But the first time that you either replace the rear brakes, front brakes, do a parking, it's paying for itself. So this video is very specific to the DCT model of the Honda Goldwing. If you have a manual clutch, uh, this really doesn't apply to you because you're not graced with the parking brake, which Honda refers to it as the parking brake lock, like we do on the Honda DCT. I love the DCT model, but there are some shortcomings with it, and one of them is, is that there's no, when you stop the motorcycle, there's no way to throw it in a gear, like you can in a manual transmission, so when you're parking on a hill or something like that, uh, the bike has the potential to roll. The rear parking brake is, it is not self-adjusting. Uh, well, let me correct that. Put the word you in front of self and that's how it's adjusted. When everything is adjusted properly, the, op the parking brake should engage after three to five clicks. But let's be honest, who listens for clicks when you're out on the road and you want to use this thing? Normally, it's just you yank up on it and you expect it to work. So I'm going to go over the first adjustment, which is generally not needed. Uh, the second adjustment that I will go over is where 99.9% .9 of people are going to be making the adjustment, and that's considered the fine adjustment or micro adjustment. All right, let me show you the first adjustment. All right, for any of these adjustments, you wanna have the bike up on the center stand, which I've already done. And the first adjustment requires a measurement of the spring. So the first thing that you wanna do is engage your parking brake by lifting it up one single click. That's a good one click. And uh, I'm gonna take a measurement at the spring on the rear wheel and if it needs an adjustment, I'm going to be doing that adjustment underneath the left side engine cover. All right, so here we're looking at the right side of the motorcycle at the rear wheel, very close to the brake caliper. Now, the first adjustment that I'm done is really a measurement to see if it needs adjusting. And with the parking brake lever engaged one click, we're going to take a measurement between this adjustment nut head and the outside of this black little nub. And it's very important to stay within a plane of this end of this spring and the beginning of this. I guess it would be like a spring stay here. So. The measurement that you're looking for in inches is 1.65 to 1.75 inches or in millimeters 42 to 44 millimeters. We want to be somewhere in between there. I'm going to use a micrometer and I'm going to take a quick measurement and I can almost guarantee that I'm within spec and I am. If I do it a little bit different plane, just to double check myself, 
I'm within spec, yeah. 1.73 inches. Okay, so assuming that the adjustment is not as out of range here, let me show you where you would make the adjustment. Okay, to make an adjustment to the overall brake cable mechanism, if the measurement that I just showed you on the rear wheel is out of spec, um, you want to get to a cable behind this rear cover. It's actually this cable right here. The way that you remove this cover is, is that there's a grommet here, there's a grommet here, actually right here, and there's a, a grommet that allows a tab to sit down in. So what you want to do is that you want to remove, pull this grommet here first, lift the top out, and then pull back on this grommet here carefully, of course. And now you've got cables exposed. Now the cable in question, I'm not going to adjust mine because mine is within spec and yours is probably too. But this cable right here, you would need to remove this sheath, actually pull back on it. And there's a uh, cable adjuster with two nuts on the end of it. You'd have to loosen the left nut first and then move the cable adjuster to essentially either pull the cable tighter or make it looser until that rear measurement falls within spec. But since that's not needed on this motorcycle, let's get down to the nitty gritty and do the micro adjustment. Okay, now I'm back onto the right side of the motorcycle by the brake caliper. Uh, on the DCT model, there are two brake systems that you have to worry about. This is your main brake caliper that operates with your either your foot control or your hand control. This is your parking brake and it's a very simple system. It's cable actuated. As I mentioned before, it's not self-adjusting. Well, you adjust it. You're going to need a 12 millimeter wrench and you're going to need either a pair of pliers or you might be able to get away with turning the adjustment screw with your with your fingers. Um, I just have the pliers with me since I'm on the ground and I'm ready to go. The prerequisites of this job is that obviously you need to have the motorcycle up in the air on a center stand so the rear tire can spin freely. You also need to have the parking brake lever pulled up or engaged one notch and not any more than one notch. It has to be exactly that one notch. And you're looking for drag on the rear wheel. Right now, I have no drag, and that's why the parking brake needs adjustment. And the way to adjust it is to unloose the locking nut, and we're gonna turn this, and it's probably gonna need a turn to the right and I can I can actually do it by with my fingers and I'm gonna turn the rear wheel until I start to feel a little bit of drag you may need to loosen up the locking nut even more as you do this there's a little drag starting still not enough I got a little drag going. You can actually hear the you can hear the rotor um, running on the brake pad behind this brake mechanism here. So I'm going to give it just a little bit more. That's too much. Can't even move the rear wheel. That's about right. Okay, now I'm going to tighten this up and technically speaking it gets 13 foot pounds of torque I'm just going to tighten it by hand that's probably good all right now the rear wheel spinning so now we're going to go engage the brake lever three to five clicks and this wheel should be locked but before we do that is that we want to disengage the brake and make sure that this wheel 
spins freely. Disengage the parking brake completely and I'm looking for the wheel to spin freely. It's spinning pretty freely. So now I'm going to go back and engage the parking brake somewhere between three to five clicks and see if this wheel's locked. All right, so I've gone back and I've pulled up on the parking brake somewhere between, th I think I actually have it at four clicks right now, and that wheel, that wheel's not moving. So now the brake is fully adjusted and right where I want it. But the real test is to get it out on the road and get it up on a hill and see if it works. And if not, it all comes down to this nut here. So the general rule of thumb is to loosen this bolt up, adjust this screw until you get drag in the wheel, tighten it back up, and then go engage the parking brake three to five clicks somewhere in that range and see if you can move the wheel. It's, uh, it's right where I need it to be. Okay, with the parking brake adjusted properly, I just wanted to quickly show you a product from Electrical Connection that it is, I did it one time when I first got the bike, I engaged the parking brake. I took the chance and I drove off with the parking brake on. And avoid that at all costs because you'll just burn up your your pads that engage the brake and you'll smell brake. But what I did is I added a dummy light that when the parking brake goes on, it flashes. And since buying this little mechanism that wires up underneath this area here, uh, they have electrical connection has released one that does the thing it gives you a an indicator but it also hooks into your kickstand so if you have the parking brake engaged and you put the kickstand up and the bikes in gear it'll it won't it'll stall the engine it won't let you basically it won't let you drive off but I found that this little indicator light is uh, very satisfactory for me. Okay, love it or hate it, we have to uh, maintain it. And uh, I hope you found the video informative. And please subscribe to the channel. If you like what you see, please click the like button. And as always, if you leave a comment, I'll comment on your comment. Thanks for watching.